Simran Singh on the Rebel Road and have just hit Morristown, New Jersey. Very excited to share many voices, many hearts with you as I tap into this town and do the Rebel Road show tonight. One of the things that is so important is that we each recognize that we have a unique genius that we are come here to share. And part of why I wanted to share all of these people is because there are so many individuals that are truly embarking on their own Rebel Road and allowing their gifts to come forward. When we do that, we also allow other people's gifts to come forward in a couple of ways. We become the example. We give people permission to be themselves and tap into their own inner gifts. And we also support them by extending the strings and strands necessary that allow them to connect as one. In the end, we are all one. And when we each one of us step into our unique genius, we fulfill the full puzzle as the puzzle piece that is missing. My guest today is Christine Clifton, and she is with ClientCentricGrowth.com. And we're going to be talking about a lot of topics, hopefully to go a little bit deeper into some of the topics about marketing, money, relationships, and knowing when to pull in and to pull out in your own life as to your creativity, your business, or your relationships that are going on and knowing what's right for you. So welcome, Christine. So happy to have you. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. We've known each other for several <laughs> years. We, we've met what one time in person when you got to come to my retreat center. Yes. And you took a NIA course. I did, um, yes. That was being offered there by Stephanie Robinson. Mm -hmm. And so we got to know each other then, and we've just kind of hung on to each other. I know. It's, it's kind of staying in each other's stratospheres in different ways. Yes. And uh, here, look at look at where we are. Who would have figured? I know, I know. It was amazing. <laughs> and, and because of you, I think we ended up in Morristown, which is such a beautiful thing. And we'll talk about that in a little yes. bit. But I want people to know who you are. And because so much of what Christine does has to do with helping people come out of their shell and really uh, learning how to be heart-centered in their approach to life, to business, to their relationships in their life, um, I thought it was perfect if you could tell people who you are so that they could see the example of that. Great, great. So yes, I'm Christine Clifton. I'm founder of Client Center Growth, and I help mindful entrepreneurs step more fully into their authentic and natural selves so they can bring their beautiful gifts more fully into the community and ultimately to the world. Now, when you talk about mindful entrepreneurs, Give me the definition or the distinction between just business or entrepreneurship and being a mindful entrepreneur. Sure, yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I uh, had this opportunity to create a message that you just heard that people could understand and identify with. And when I look at who I work really well with and who seem to resonate the most with the type of thing that I teach and guide and coach, they were people who were more reflective, um, gained energy in their lives more from their internal uh, origin. So they, they tend to go within and look and analyze and think. Um, and so the word mindful came to me as a, as a beautiful way to honor that internal process that um, is their motivator. I know that in the past, it feels like we've been a very and we have been a very masculine society, whether we've been men or women. And so when it comes to business and many relationships in that venue, it seems like we've been a little bit more willful or pushing mm -hmm. or aggressive or uh, perhaps a harder in nature in terms of how we do those things. As we move into this resurgence of the divine feminine, that feels so much uh, what this type of entrepreneurship is about, that it is that heart-centered and it is more about the receiving as you do business rather than the pushing and trying to, to shove out. Can you speak a little bit to that if, if I'm correct? Oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm doing little joy jumps inside my heart here and you speak because I do see that happening. Um, and now I, I not only work with women, I work with men as well. And so when people ask me about that, um, I, I look at the gentlemen that have stepped in to work with me and they are more heart centered. They are more internally, um, at least initiated in their, their approach to business and aren't the more aggressive type of maybe stereotypical business person we might think. So yes, I see this movement towards collaboration. I, I personally feel like we have this beautiful technology rise that's happened over the past you know, 10, 15 years in our country 
that's moved us behind screens. And as pack animals, <laughs> we have not quite fully realized that, oh, that separated us from connecting, collaborating. So I feel like for some of us consciously and for some of us not so consciously, that we have this desire to connect again. And so that becomes a platform for the work that I do is um, bringing that awareness of that need and desire back to the, back to business. And in many cases, it was already there, maybe uh, more fully in business. And also, some of us have forgotten to, how to do that, how to collaborate, how to have a real conversation as opposed to posting on Facebook or sending out a tweet or sending an email, which is all very one-sided communication. And so the communication and the conversation skill set has atrophied in some of us, and in some of the younger generation hasn't yet been learned fully uh, as to how to sit with what might feel like conflict or sit with a, a, a point of view that might feel a little different than ours or sit with someone as a business owner. We know we can help and how can I communicate and conversate with them to help them see that I can help as opposed to the sell, 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 push, push, push approach that there might be a, a, a belief that that's the only way. Yes, and actually you bring up two points I'd love to dive right into and okay. one of those is you know, as I embarked on the Rebel Road, part of it was uh, I had always been this very shy, introverted, kind of behind the scenes, you know, behind the computer kind of person. So social media was actually a way for me to get out and connect. But then it got to a point where I realized I'm not really connecting with people in the way that I want to connect. And that's what spurred the Rebel Road as a way for me to connect with people and open a conversation that I wanted to have with people. As we move into that place of being more connected, how do individuals that are such introverts and shy, how do they push forward when that's so against their nature? Because I think that's one of the hardest things to do is you know, want to be on stage or want to get out there and share a message and not quite know how to get past that fear of, of stepping out. Yes, and I am all about honoring the, the full gifts or the secret superpowers of introversion. Uh, so it's not needing to become an extrovert, yet it's also acknowledging the strength of the gifts of the introvert and seeing where those can be utilized the most fully. And when those places are found, now in business, it can either be the type of work that you really resonate with that you're doing, or it, and or it might be a group of people that you really are jazzed about helping. And so when those fine points are found, the introvert finds it much more natural to step in as themselves in those places. So different uh, markets that they might want to serve and in different ways that they want, would like to present themselves. I was, I was actually having a text conversation this morning with a colleague who had a, his first one day event yesterday and we had debriefed a little bit. He, was saying, you know, I think I'm an amb ambivert because I am introvert and extrovert. I said, I don't believe in ambiversion. What I believe in is introverts who have owned their own unique special gifts and stepped into those places. And when they do, then they come through much more mm -hmm. fully and naturally. And authentic tends to be a little overused sometimes and people have different definitions. So I use natural. Um, and so it isn't, as it isn't so much about stepping out of a shell as an introvert as much as it is finding that platform that really makes our soul sing. And then it happens naturally. Well, and it also sounds like what you're saying is either we can focus on all the I'm shy, I'm introverted, I can't get up and speak, I can't do this, or we can discover our gifts and let that be the focus and then that takes over instead. Absolutely, and that becomes this just little burning fire that keeps us stepping forward. And it's a little bit of knowing yourself and your purpose. It's a little bit of then also looking at the unique gifts that you have to bring. Um, there's a, there's, I think collaboration is the new competition. And so when we can really be very refined and very specific about not only the work we do, but also 
the people that want that work or who we can help the most with that work, it opens up the opportunity for collaboration because we all have these little niche markets now that we're working within and if I choose not to do X work, I know there's someone out there that I can refer someone to who, who can be that specific. Um, I use the term called spray and pray, is not a strategy. And many people feel like the broader their reach, the more chance they have to grow their business. And I find that's very different, especially for more quiet entrepreneurs or introverted entrepreneurs because the voice gets lost. It's like whispering in a crowded room. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get, you're not heard. So when we take that extra time to really look within the person behind the business, to say, who are you? Who are your gifts? Uh, what are your gifts and what work do you really want to be focusing on? And then say, who really wants that work? That opens up the whole realm for stepping in naturally it also, from a practical marketing perspective, gets us very clear on where to advertise, where to go to network, what to say. Um, it becomes much more easy, not only from a monetary investment, but also from a time investment perspective. Introverts tend to like to have a lot of downtime and quiet time. So this approach really makes it efficient and effective what they do choose to do. So they have that space of extra time that they need and want for energy regeneration, for um, meditation or quiet time, whatever the case might be. You know, as you were speaking, something came forward, and I know for me as I go out on the Rebel Road, it, it doesn't matter if five people show up in the room or if a thousand people show up in the room. It's, it's about my heart wants this. You know, my soul wants this. I want to express. I want to experience. Business has always been, and, and typically everything, especially in Western society, has been about the measurements and about oh, yes. how many dollars and how many people and how you know what's the what's the stats on everything. How is this way of doing business different, and why is it so important that we move as a society more into this direction? Yes, wow, that's a big question and an important one because we do want to earn a living, <laughs> and there's this harmony of action and allow that I that I talk about. And I, I, I tend to, my belief is that balance is a myth. You can be balanced and burdened. Um, so it's about harmony. And so action and allow, um, measurement and, and, you know, allowing, you know, what will happen. The same friend who I had the text conversation with had um, a lower than expected response to his offer at his, at his event. And so a lot of our conversation last night on the phone and somewhat through text was about, these are people who have asked for your help. It's not the number, the volume that you expected. These are people who have stepped in to what you're offering. And so trusting that your vision was set in that place of alignment with your purpose and, and what you wanna do. And those people said, me. And so yes, our practical brain says, that's not enough money to pay the rent this month. So what else can I do or should I do? And so part of what I work with, not only in my own business, but with uh, a reframe, I do a lot of perspective switches with my clients, is now that there were, let's call it 60 people at his event, there may have been a smaller number who said, yes, how can you touch those other 60 who have experienced you. We think, oh, we have to do spray and pray. I have to go broader and wider now to get the revenue that I need. Yet, he already made a mark on those 60 people that stepped into the event. And so the harmony of that is now, I'm going to nurture that 60. It, you have a better chance at gaining traction with people who've experienced you already than continuing to spray and pray beyond your reach. And so again, I think that's in alignment with uh, those of us who are a little more introverted is, I trust that when I set my vision and I express myself in a way that's in alignment with who I am and the work I wanna to bring to the world, I'm trusting that people are going to step in. The story you shared about, um, I think it was in your newsletter, about the uh, auto station owner who heard what you said, um, and I might even venture a guess in the Bible Belt South, 
and your work is a little more spiritual, a little more broad than some different religious beliefs. And so sometimes people think, oh gosh, I, I shouldn't say it this way, I'm in the South, but you didn't. You stayed true in what you said your message was, and you were gifted in return, unsolicited. I know, amazing. And so that's what ends up happening. I just got chills down yeah. the left side of my body. And it is a huge level of trust. I, I, I have my own story about money, which I'm happy to share, um, in my path to trust. <laughs> and it's a, it's a uh, common theme with, with most entrepreneurs because we are self-sustaining. Well, please share. Please okay. share, because I think, I think that's one of the biggest excuses that people make rather than embarking on what they want to do in life. They make that excuse, I don't have the money, or the money won't come, or I can't trust. And The Rebel Road is so much, not only about the unknown, but it's about breaking the paradigms and some of the misalignments and the masks that we put on things like money or how we operate in the world to try to manipulate that into coming in. So I'd love for you to share your story. I will. Wonderful, thank you for that. Um, not too long ago, earlier this year, um, I found myself with $200 to my name. Uh, I had been in corporate for 20 years. I cashed out my 401k over my course of entrepreneurship. I uh, cashed in my pension plan. This was all stepping into trust, though I, didn't, I wasn't fully conscious of it at the time I was doing those things. I just knew that I had to do this thing, this, this course of entrepreneurship. And so earlier this year, Superstorm Sandy impacted me very dramatically, both personally and professionally. I had three months of zero business income um, after Superstorm Sandy here. And so I was facing the beginning of the year with, with $200 in the bank account, um, no visible other monetary resources. I had sold jewelry. I had sold things that I felt I could sell to earn money. And I was in what I call that fetal position on the floor moment. And it was almost as if the universe brought me to a place, I, in retrospect I can see this at the time, uh, not so much, but I had no other choice at that point. But we, to, we've been there, we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> we all get there. <laughs> to, to fully trust. And so I had this little bit of money, I had bills that needed to be paid, and I made a choice to invest in one session with a business coach and I stepped into that session 90 minutes I won't say it was this huge epiphany or aha but it was someone who moved me through a certain thought process and I was looking for jobs again in corporate as well at this time we have to do what we have to do to sustain and within the first 10 days after that coaching session, I had three brand new clients. Mm. And the revenue came, I was able to pay my bills, and I had this huge knowing about trust. I had another hiccup a couple months later when I really saw that I wasn't fully trusting, and I was maybe 90% of the way there, and something else happened similar. I, my coffers went down again, and I said, oh, I see now. I was less fetal on the floor and more aware and oh okay and I came back to my personal practice of um, really centering and coming back to my purpose and I continued to look for jobs as well because it brought when I got to that place of trust I said there's no shame in going back to corporate and and I was putting that picture of shame on myself um, that if I had to go had to go back to corporate so I opened up that possibility looking for jobs. I went on an interview that was fabulous. I was excited about getting the, the J-O-B and it didn't come through. And I see now that as I stepped more into trust, the flow began to happen more and more in my business as well. And so um, it ain't easy, you know, I will definitely say that. Yet I know, I've had proof the, my whole life that I've been provided for. I didn't have the level of awareness that I do now that it was happening at the time. And I feel like the universe brought me to this place before the coffers got that low, but brought me to this place where I was seeing the money come in and flow out, which is the natural flow. And before I reached this place of lack, which is really what it was, 
I was looking at my bank account as not only a measurement of my success, mm. but also as that's all there is. Yes, I think I think so many of us do that. It's, it's I would say, normal. And I also now know the natural way. I'm, I do this thing with normal and natural as well. The, the natural way is that it's always in flow. It, it, is, it comes in and flows out. And so when I had the traditional mindset of looking at my bank account and saying, that's what I have to work with, I was limiting myself. And so now that I'm more in this place of understanding and trusting flow, um, it, it's, it's happening. It's happening. You know, there's that saying that we teach what we're here to learn, and I've reframed that because I really believe we learn what we're here to teach. That too, And yes. so, you know, it, it seems so much that you had to go through those experiences because you're going to attract all the people that are going to be having those same thoughts, those same feelings, those same experiences, so that you know from a very emotional as well as physical standpoint and mental what that looks and feels like for you to be able to move them forward in a powerful way. Yes. So I think so often people don't realize what I'm going through is actually getting me towards my purpose or towards what my calling might be rather than if this is another challenge I've got to trudge through. It's very true. And, and what just came to me as you were speaking was I, I love the work of Brene Brown yes. who does some amazing and incredible research on vulnerability and shame. And what happens sometimes, and I know with me, very independent, self-sustaining, and you know, single woman owning my own business. I wasn't sharing my story. I wasn't opening that vulnerability up. I wasn't letting people see that that path. Part of it was because of shame, and part of it was because I thought I had to look successful on the outside for people. You see how I'm doing this? <laughs> for people to do business with me, and so as I gained this new awareness, I began sharing my story. I have a, 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 a nice readership on my e -zine, but also my Facebook wall, my business wall. And the more I was able to open up and share that true space of where I was, the more people raised their hand and said, that's me. I was there, or I am there, or help me know what, what it is you did. And, and it becomes more natural to, to share the, the ups and the downs, because that is not only the role model, if we want to look at it that way, but the example that we set. So it is understanding that that path is what gives us the fodder to teach, yet it's sharing the path yes. as well. You know, I, I think that that's why my platform has grown so strongly so quickly, is because I've always been willing to really share what I have been going through because people want to connect with that. They want to know that you've been where they are, you are where they are, and you can identify with them. And it also helps them to understand, gosh, if they can do it, I can too. Otherwise, we put these people up on these pedestals, and number one, that's a long way for them to fall. Yes. But number two, it's a long way for us to climb up to. It and is. And we're all really the same. We are all the same. Yes. Yes, we are all the same. Mm -hmm. I would love to talk a little bit about how the money paradigm has to change. I know that in the course of me going through trying to sustain 1111 Magazine and do different things, I, I started to be approached with different types of tactics that are used not just in the field of spirituality, but have been used in many other uh, fields. And what started to happen is I started to feel this kind of ickiness in how it was done because I saw prices were hyped up and then you would get a special deal for what you were getting. It <laughs> started to feel like really bad car salesman -y kind of stuff and it just was like, why is this happening in this industry? Why is this, why are number one, you know, people doing that or feeling like they need to do that? And then why number two are people falling for it? Yes. And I think that there's this really, um, I don't want to say terrible because it's, I, I don't want it to feel like it's a judgmental thing. I think it is a step for us to get clearer on where we need to go, for us to recognize a distortion in ourselves. But there is a manipulation that is an undercurrent that needs to clear. But it's only going to happen when we each step up and realize where we're kind of taking part in it. Can you talk a little bit yes. about what that 
I could probably talk all day on that particular topic, but I won't. Um, it is very poignant, especially in the coaching and consulting industry where I float. And I stepped into a coaching program uh, last year uh, that taught a lot of that uh, methodology. And part of what I attribute my zero business income months to is pushing and trying to apply that methodology. Yes. I, I somehow had this blind spot, I, I guess I would call it, or maybe it was naivety, but I adopted something that wasn't in alignment with me and my own values. Now, sometimes we're faced with that so that we can learn what our values are and our beliefs are around that. So I feel like um, it wasn't fully sitting well with me. And my, the friend that I shared about the text conversation, I also feel that was somewhat part of his less than uh, n numbers that he wanted, was that he did something that he was coached to do and it wasn't fully in alignment with him. And so there's a lot of psychology behind marketing. There truly is. Mm -hmm. Decisions are made with a limbic brain, which is not the part of the brain that makes factual or logical decisions. And so marketing has really headed towards that emotional response and manipulating that emotional response so that sales and business, you know, uh, purchases are made. So I feel like there is a way to understand the psychology of marketing and still be in integrity with ourselves about how we present. And um, in the coaching industry, oh, come to this two-day training, the value is $14,699. It's yours for $97. And, and I'm not sure if it's us introverts who may be a little more cynical about, like we can kind of see through marketing tactics. I think that is partially the case is because we do sit back and analyze a little bit. Um, and so there is that disconnect, but it does present this impetus that if all the first 10 get it at 97, everyone else has to pay $14,699. And so it, it, it does work, even though we have perhaps a part of ourselves that says there's something not right here. So coming back to the money, wow. We were even talking when you were starting Rebel Road, what do we charge for this? Like, well, how do you charge? What's the value? And it really comes back to, uh, you'll hear a lot of coaches say it's your self-worth, and I don't fully subscribe to that. I think our self-worth does come into understanding the full value of what we present, but really the value of our offerings is weighted on the result that, especially as an entrepreneur, the clients are gonna gain from that. So if I have a program that um, I charge $197 for, um, and I know for sure that they're gonna gain value that's gonna return their money, ROI, for greater than that. Um, I know that I can communicate that in a very authentic way, that here's what you're gonna learn, here's the investment level. And so this summer I did my, uh, one of my first public classes without the marketing ploy. Uh, it's valued at 600, well, I didn't do that this time. I was fully in alignment, I placed the value on them, and I had, uh, probably I guess about six or eight people this summer step into class and I trust that that those people were the ones who heard what I said it resonated with them this topic and they stepped in Would I liked greater numbers I guess but I know and trust that I set my vision I set my integrity for the money and the people stepped in and now I have relationships with eight people in a very deep way and I know that I can utilize them in that exchange. And I'll say, it's not only a money exchange. We now have that emotional exchange that is the marketing psychology of purchasing. So they have that emotional engagement with me now. They understand my methods. They understand my approach and how I hold the space for them. And whether it's them who step into my next thing or me asking them, do you know anyone who might resonate with me and my work and I'm doing this other thing, could you introduce me? This is how I like to look at that exchange. It's not only money, but it's an emotional investment. It's a relationship exchange that happens and it expands beyond the dollar itself. 
That's so perfect, <clears throat> and I'm glad you shared all of that because I think so many people feel they have to follow the pack rather than really trusting what's in here. And I know that I, I personally also did a couple of those things, and I just had this ickiness that was inside of me, and I knew I could not do that again. And whenever I'm approached with those types of things, I completely now say, you know, I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to share my message freely. I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to do anything. I just want to share my message freely. And it's so interesting. I'll have half of them open to that and the other half say, no, we're completely here because we are about the money. So talk about mm -hmm. this use of the word service in the name uh, as the name that is placed on it, but it's really selling. How do we really understand this is service, this is selling? Because I think that that's another word that's now being put in front of things as um, a ploy for many people. And I want individuals to get clear when they're going out and doing something, what service really is and calling service service. Okay, so now are you speaking to this like servant leadership or this t terminology of service first, but it's really selling? Is that what yes. you're speaking to? Yes. Okay. I, I'll, I haven't experienced a lot of that myself, so I'm not sure I have um, a place uh, or an experience to share. I, f I feel that they're one in the same, in my world, um, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure your experience. Um, when, we, when, when we come to this place of service within ourselves, alignment with purpose, mm -hmm. then we are responsible for the message that we bring about what, what it is that we do. And that message is then what draws people to us. That's sales. It may not be a traditional definition of sales. It's not the wham yow commercial <laughs> late at night. Um, but it is a way of selling service. My specialty is service business owners because we tend to be very personal, take very personally our service. And so it brings in a lot of extra things that um, um, of entrepreneurship that selling this product outside of myself or serving at a restaurant or a retail store is a little bit different, even though those are service as well. But the serving of self becomes a bit personal. And so when we can really articulate that benefit that people are gonna gain from us, um, that is when people choose to step into us, yet we are responsible for delivering our message. And I think that for quiet entrepreneurs, that's the place that they're most uncertain because that's the place that feels like selling, like I have to push, push, come to my class. Yet when we've done that pre-work of evoking your purpose, evoking your platform, evoking the work that you're really meant to be doing, that's when we can create that message that draws those people who want that thing of yours the most. So um, that's, I think, the extent that I, that I can speak to service and sales. For me, it's one and the same. Um, and, and the sale is the start. It's not the end. And so once someone steps in, it's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> and that's what's key in the end is the relationships to people. I believe so, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, when, when I embarked on the Rebel Road, you were one of the first individuals that I talked to. And you got so excited, it really resonated with you, the whole thing about relationships and getting out from behind yes. the computers and all of that and, and, and stepping out into courage. And you really took charge and started to develop a team and, and get people in the area to know about it, which I so very much appreciate, um, all of the support. And then there came a point where you felt like you needed to step back. And so often, I think, when people are engaged in something, they don't allow themselves the permission to ebb and flow in the experience. Or they then judge themselves if they all of a sudden have to pull back. Or the person that they're with, they, that person might judge themselves, or they are concerned about what the other person might think. Talk a little bit about that, because you had, the, you had your own guidance that it was time to step back and go into silence for a bit for yourself. And I really want people to understand that that is okay. Okay. Yes. I love to talk about that. And yes, I, when when I found out what Simran was doing, I was so jazzed, and I still am jazzed. Can't wait for tonight. Um, and I am a promoter, 
Um, and so it's very easy for me. I, I have this gift of drawing community, um, sometimes without even trying. And so yes, we collected and we brought all kinds of ideas together and we started forth. And then I started, you know, I'm doing this. It, it, there was something that was telling me that I wasn't to lead it. I was to gather, but not to lead it. And I'm like, why? It doesn't make any sense. You know, I'm good at this. I could, I could get a hundred people in that room in a skinny minute. And there, I had, I know now that I must listen to this because there's something else out there that I'm not aware of yet, apparently. And I am now at a point that I trust that feeling. So I communicated to you that I'm not to lead this. Is there anyone else who can lead? And your response actually brought tears to my eyes. You said something like, I hear you and I see you and I honor you. And it isn't common for that kind of response to come from, I'll do something, oh, no, I changed my mind. People judge that typically. Now, I wouldn't expect anything different from you, Simran, but being on that receiving end of it, it was like, and so not knowing why, about, I don't know, a week or 10 days later, I received the message that I was to take a personal retreat. And the time, when I looked at my calendar, which is always fairly full, I had 10, 11 days, no, nothing booked in 11 days. And so I stepped into a personal retreat and that 11 days ended this past Sunday, which was just three days ago. And so obviously, if I had said yes to leading, I would have had to, I would have dropped the ball in the middle of it. So if I hadn't have honored that feeling up front before things gained momentum and I was the core, um, you know, uh, band director of, of the, the street team, it would have been worse. And so, um, so you're honoring my uh, leading, me not knowing why or not really having a good reason even to tell you the, the, the third dimension here, they, we need reasons. And um, I, I now trust that I sometimes can't give them. So it opened that space for me to step into personal retreat for myself, which was fantastic. And now I'm back to be able to participate here and to come tonight and enjoy the event as well. So, Well, I appreciate everything that you've done. And in the end, we really are the only one here. So we have to trust and honor that guidance that comes forward. And I think for so many of us, it is about being willing to speak that voice and trust what we are feeling guided to do and allow whatever response has to come, whether that response is a positive or a negative one, and then feel into that, whether that's something that we need to own or not own, celebrate or not celebrate. So be certain that you are trusting yourself. And, and if you're on the other end of the receiving of something like that, understand that it is also part of the unknown and part of your own path of trust to know that you're well taken care of. It's not dependent on any one person because we are all collective and that that other person in this case was that person that was actually going off to hold her space for whatever she needed. But in that, because we are one, I knew that the space she was holding was also the space of me that needed that silence. And it was not something I could do, I was busy. <laughs> so you did it for me. And that's, if we can start to look at the world in that way, that we are that one and this one is now taking care of that piece for me, I think we will connect deeper and deeper and we will finally merge as that oneness that we are. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also feel that in business, it can be an even greater opportunity uh, to step into that trust. I think business has this um, practical practicality to it in our world right now that is unfamiliar with leading or stepping into trust from that perspective without having that reason for it. Um, I'm part of a mastermind group and we had agreed to travel to meet all together in St. Louis in November and I also have gotten the leading that I'm not to go. And I had, I, I, I have to now, I have to speak because I have seen the benefit and the power of following this. And so I'm telling, you know, five other practical business owners, I'm not going to be coming after I said I would. And I, I told them, um, 
I don't know why. My intuition is telling me I'm not to travel to this event. And if I'm able, I'll step in via, you know, Uvu or, or Skype. Um, and I, I also need to listen to this. And so, so it's, it's, I hate, to, I hate to put things in categories or silos, but it's one thing with two spiritual people who get it. I'm using a lot of air quotes today. <laughs> um, and it can be another thing in practical business to hold true to, to that as well. And that, that's part of what is my greatest joy in my business is to hold that space for the person behind the business so that I can help them navigate those waters that are even more unfamiliar because they're bringing their spirit self into their work and into the workplace. And so that can be even greater uncharted waters than when you're in community with automatically or all, you know, like-minded people already. Absolutely. Christine, yes. thank you so much. You've brought so much wisdom. Thank you so much. You've shared so many things that I know are supportive to people out there. And whatever you're embarking on, you know, it really is about the relationships and staying true. This is Christine Clifton. Her website is clientcentricgrowth.com. If you need any sort of support or coaching or want to connect with her, uh, the value that she's given you today, just in the words of wisdom that she shared, is immeasurable. So take that in and Go back and listen to this again because there were so many nuggets. We are each here to be that unique genius to sparkle and shine. And it is it gives me great pleasure to bring you the radiance and brilliance of so many individuals that I see as I go down the rebel road. Until next time, I'm Simran Singh and Christine Clifton. In love, of love, with love and as love. Take care. Bye-bye.